trouble at Dan Murphy's. Dan Murphy's is a bit like Bunnings. You go in needing to get one thing, a carton of beer or a bottle of wine, and you walk out like this. Hello, Mindy. It's one of the great Australian business success stories, but a civil war in the boardroom is threatening to tear it apart. It's an interesting new chapter in a story that started in Melbourne in 1952, with Daniel Francis Murphy's dream to get Australia really pissed. <laughs> he was a part-time journo, part-time wine enthusiast. Like you. Daniel opened another four or five stores and in 1998 he sold the business to Woolworths and that's where everything changed. Within a few years, a half a dozen stores grew to about 250 and we all got very drunk because the booze got very cheap. It begins! <laughs> so cheap that in 2003 the competition watchdog investigated Dan's over allegations from smaller retailers that it and arch rival First Choice Liquor, which was owned by Coles, were misusing their market power. In 2021, Woolworths spun out its liquor interests. The supermarket had more than 300 pubs in which, at least on the East Coast, it housed thousands of pokey machines, and it owned a handful of retailing brands of which Dan's was the biggest. Endeavour Group debuted on the stock market at a bit over 6 bucks a share, hit a high of $8.30 or thereabouts last year, but has since lost its fizz. Accusations of underperformance have triggered a boardroom tussle. Former Woolies boss Bill Wavish, who's wanted a seat on the board for a while, has just won the support of Endeavour's biggest shareholder. Bruce Matheson owns 15% of the company. Endeavour's worth $9.4 billion, so that's... maths... more than a billion dollars in stock. And he's not happy. Not at all. Reckons Bill is the man to right the ship, because when he was at Woolies, he not only directed the expansion of Dan's, but also created the BWS brand. Showdown will be very public at Endeavour's next AGM, which isn't that far away. The existing board is expected to defend itself by saying lacklustre profits are less about management and more about the rising cost of living, crimping spending and all that That's jazz. a fair point. It is. Who knows what the truth is there, though. For every headline you see about the world ending, there's another one saying we're going gangbusters. We've got a growing number of commentators warning us that China is about to fall off a cliff and is going to take us with them. But then we've got a prediction by Big Four accounting firm KPMG that house prices in Perth, the Australian city most exposed to a China slowdown, are going to go up by a nation leading 8.4% by the end of June. Oh. And another 88 next financial year. And even though inflation's still going up, some economists reckon we're out of the woods, which means prices of everyday essentials like Cartons of Swan Draft and cases of Wyndham Bin Triple Five could be coming down. Cheers to that. Mm -hmm. I'm Ben Harvey. For more up late, click the subscribe button below.